What up? I got nice skin here with me. This ain't a diss song. But, um, yeah, uh huh, you know what it is. I'm a cheese head, y'all niggas cheese whiz. Pittsburgh Steelers, that's nothing. That Super Bowl ring, that's nothing. up in your town. Just wanted to start out saying that was a that was a really good team win for us. Uh, anytime you can win a division game, especially against a, a quality opponent like the Minnesota Vikings, you can never take that for granted. And you know, it was awesome. It was an electric atmosphere. I thought our crowd really did a great job of, of getting loud and provided that spark that we're looking for each and every week. And it really allowed us to get out to a fast start. Uh, it was it was also great to have. You know, see Bart Starr's family here, uh, Cherry and, and the rest of his family, and then and having to get the opportunity to finally meet Brett Favre and, and the rest of the alumni. I thought, I thought it was just a great game day uh, atmosphere. Can you just talk about how the defense on there drive after drive in the fourth quarter protecting that defense? Yeah, they did a great job, man. I mean, we were trying to – we, we we stalled a little bit offensively in that in that second half. Couldn't really get much going, and they were they played they were on the grass quite a bit. But to to the credit of our guys, we all they they stuck together. And we, we talk about it sometimes. We're going to have to face some adversity, and and how do we respond in those tough situations? And our guys they stuck together. They didn't blink, and, and you know it was a great team win. Uh, what did you think of your offense today? Because it looked. Like everything you want it to be to start, and then as you said, you kind of stalled out. What's your, uh, what's your yeah? Goal? You know, again, a really quality opponent. Got a lot of respect for Mike Zimmer and and the players that they have um, on that roster on that defensive side of the ball. You know, what really hurt us was in the first half we didn't have as many third downs, and when we did, they were third and manageable. We were converting. In the second half, it's just we were again third and long, and they put us in some tough situations and. You know, we got to do a better job of staying ahead of the sticks. That was one of the goals going into the game. And I, I really don't know. I don't really think we did that as well in the second half. On the fourth down, did you want to go for that? Well, you know, again, I, I, I'll say this. I got to do a better job of communicating to Aaron in that situation. He thought it, he thought it was the first down. Um, and I, I got, I've got to let him know that, we're gonna we're gonna take points there, but you know it is what it is. You you live and learn. But again, that that that, that falls on me right there. Is there time to take a time out there for you? Or? Well, we jumped the ball pretty fast, and you know, in hindsight, yeah, there probably was um, where I could have I could have burned the timeout. So Matt, did you know? I mean, based on the way they were spotting the ball, it, it looked like he had gained the first down. Um, did you know right away that it was fourth down, though, or was there some confusion? Yeah, I, I was. I assumed it, it was fourth down because I didn't see a, um, you know, the official signal for the first down. So, but I, I got to do a better job in the headset, communicating to Aaron and, and letting him know. What did the Vikings do in the second half to kind of take away that balanced offensive attack, setting up the play action that you had in the first half and was kind of missing in the second? Yeah, you know. It, I thought they played pretty pretty soft coverage wise, where where they were they weren't going to allow the big plays, and um, you know our guys did a good job of of running the football. Probably need to stay a little bit more committed to that and just be patient and let those big plays come. It looked like uh, you and Aaron had kind of a spirited, quick discussion there at the near the end of the first half. What uh, what was that? Yeah, that's just two competitive guys, uh, and I'm sure it's not going to be the last one we have. Uh, but you know just. Just competitors, heat of the moment, and um, you know, it is what it is. Matt, are you are you always good? I mean, this is going to happen, right? I mean, the Fox cameras catch it, people start talking about it. Are you good with those kinds of interactions with him? Or do you want that kind of thing with your competitive quarterback? Yeah, I want. I, I would. I would much rather have that than than anything else because I, you want guys that are extreme competitors, and that's that's what he is. Now, what was your thinking with the guard rotation? And it looked like Lane had a really key block there on that last drive where you, you ran out the clock. Well, you know, just because Lane started the year, every position is going to be up for competition throughout the throughout the entire season. So, you know, we, we feel good about both those guys. That's why they're both here, and um, it's a competitive situation. 
How big were the takeaways for your defense today, especially Kevin King? Yeah, I think that was the difference in the game. You, you talk about, we always talk about winning the turnover battle, and right now, uh, that's we're two for two in that department, and I really think that, that's why we're sitting at two and zero. It's like about the way you came out of the gate offensively. Yeah, it just it, it felt crisp, it felt clean. We were getting chunk plays both in the run game and in the pass game. Uh, I thought our operation was good. You know, we were converting on third down. I think the two fir first downs that are the two third downs that we did not convert in the first half were the the two short yardage situations. So. Um, you know, it just it, the operation felt smooth. Yeah, did you did you have an inkling that that touchdown to Diggs, the three yard one that they ended up wiping out was? Did you see that unfold that way, or were you a little surprised when they said it was under review and you actually got out of that? Without well, a once I saw the review, then I you know it, it made sense to me because it, it it clearly happened beyond the the one yard rule. After two weeks, do you think you're any closer to determining who's that true number two option? I mean, it looked like both Geronimo and Marquez got a couple of looks out there today. Yeah, we feel good with all our guys, and I'll never, my mindset will never go there. Who's our number two option? I think we've got a lot of great options, and um, it's just how, how we set it up for them to, to where they fall within the progression. That's just kind of grind your games, but two victories. Your players really seem enthusiastic, really appreciative coming off the field. Uh, what you, what, what's your sense from them in the results you've gotten with two victories so far? Yeah, I just think that, just like you, you mentioned, I mean, talk about two grinded out games that are going to come down to the end, and I thought our guys continue to stay together, and that's what we, we keep preaching to them. And, um, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of, a lot of character in that locker room. I'm really proud of those guys. Like kind of building off that, when you have that interception in the first half and you see all your defensive guys go to the end zone and celebrate together, is that a Mike Pettin thing? Is that a you thing? Is that just a culture, new culture here in Green Bay? What do you kind of credit that to? Yeah, I think that's just the guys taking ownership. And, you know, we, we've said it before. We want to make this – this is their team. And, um, you know, I, I think that just shows the connectedness of those guys and that, that they care for each other and they get excited when – it doesn't matter who, who makes the play. They're excited for their other guy. A few more, please. Matt, in, in what ways do you think the wristband was effective or helped you or got what you I know it helped me to be able to spit out a play call a lot faster. That's for sure. So, you know, we'll, we'll assess it moving forward and, and see, see how it goes. Do you feel any better about the tempo today? Yeah, again, I, I thought, especially early on, I thought we got in and out well. Um, it helps when you're getting positive chunk plays. Uh, but there's still a lot of room for improvement all, all across the board. Matt, you know, it's, it's a little bit tough for us because we covered the same coach for 13 years. So if this is not uncommon, I'm sorry for asking it. But there was a defensive series where you actually sat with Aaron on the bench. And I, I don't think I remember seeing that, at least in a long time. What's your philosophy in doing that? And is that something Sean does or other guys do too that you kind of believe in or what? Yeah, I'm not worried. I'll be honest with you, I'm not worried about how other people do it. I just, I just want to make sure that he and I are on the same page and we're calling things that he feels comfortable with. Um, just so, because I know this, if he feels confident in it, it's got a lot better chance of working. Are you able to do that because of your Faith and Mike. There. There's no no question with with Mike and Sean. So I've got all the confidence in the world in those guys. I'm so we're so lucky to have those guys here. Um, and I can't say enough about either one of those guys. And it certainly helps having Mike Pettin, having him been a head coach before. Um, so that that affords me that ability to go sit there with with Aaron in those situations. Love my team. Yeah, that's the team with them big G's on the helmet.